Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture 12 of Comsol Multiphysics training course. Today we are going to model triboelectric nanogenerators in Comsol. In this video, we do one model and then we continue on that in the future videos. So let's begin. So what is triboelectric nanogenerator or TNG? TNG is a novel technology for conversion of mechanical energy to electrical energy. In fact, the TNG is based on the contact electrification of two dissimilar materials and then electrostatic induction. The TNG is relatively new and it has been applied for different types of applications such as energy harvesting for low power electronics and sensing applications. The TNG has a very high voltage output but a very low current output and the intrinsic impedance is super high. The TNG may need a circuit design for practical applications as well. So let's see how TNG works. This is the example of a TNG, which is based on the contact and separation of two materials. As you can see, we have two dissimilar materials and when they are brought into contact because of the triboelectricity, the charges are generated on the surfaces. One surface get negative charges and the other surface get positive charges, depending on the polarity of the materials. And as they get separated, due to the change of the electric field, an unbalance is occurred on the backing electrodes, which causes the charge flow, and this means the electricity generation. I don't want to go through the details. You can find more information about the TNG on internet. So let's see what are the working modes and output characteristics of the TNG. TNG can work in four different modes. The first one is the contact and separation mode, which I explained before, which is based on the contact of two dissimilar materials and then the separation of that. And this means that the contact and separation can generate a signal. The other mode is called sliding, which means that the sliding of two different materials may cause charge generation and then electricity generation. The next one is called single electrode, where one of the materials is connected to a reference electrode and the charge is transferred from the reference to the electrode. And finally, the free standing mode where a material is moving freely between the two electrodes. Each of them has different applications and advantages. And remember, to make a TNG, at least one of the materials should be an insulator to keep the charge on the surfaces. What are the main output characteristics of the TNG? The first one is the open circuit voltage, which is the voltage where the system is under open circuit condition. What does that mean? Imagine that the load is located between the two electrodes of the TNG and it is a resistive load. And when the resistance is infinity or super large, we can call the open circuit condition. The other important output characteristics is the transfer charge under short circuit condition, which means that R is zero. Remember, we are going to use them in the future. There are some notes that we need to know about the TNG. First is if we know the VOC and QSC, we may be able to calculate other output of the system, such as current, power, output voltage, and so on. Also, the interesting thing is we can estimate the open circuit and short circuit by console simulation, and we will see how we can do that. Also, Based on the console simulation, we can design and optimize and find the performance of the TNG systems. That's why it is very important to know how to model the TNG in console and how to extract VOC and QSC. Okay, before we continue to our model, I need to give you some important considerations. The first thing is the selection of material is very important for the TNG design. In fact, the materials should be very different in terms of their tribopolarity, which means that the selected materials should have very negative tribopolarity and very positive tribopolarity. So when they are in contact to each other, a huge amount of charge should be generated. So that's why in the design of the TNGs, the materials are selected from the bottom of this graph and the top of this graph. In fact, one of the materials should be selected from the bottom of this series and the other one from the top of this series so that their contact generates more charge, okay? The other important consideration is the surface properties of the contact materials. As it sounds, TNG is based on the tribology and the charge generated on the surface. So there are some methods to improve the output of the TNG. For example, if we can improve the morphology and the contact area by adding micro or nano structure or even with chemical functionalization. 
And finally, the structural design is very important. Depending on the mode of operation, you can have specific designs to effectively transfer the mechanical energy to the system to convert to the electrical energy, right? And there are so many designs for this application. In today's model, we are going to study one of the most important working modes of the TNG, which is called the sliding mode. As it sounds, the sliding mode is based on the sliding of two dissimilar materials. For example, imagine we have nylon with positive electron affinity and PTFE or Teflon as negative affinity. So when they are in contact, the charges are generated in positive and negative fashions. And as they get separated, electrons are transferred between the backing electrodes. And this is a cycle of working operation. And as it sounds, the TNG has an alternating output because the mechanical load should be alternating as well. So let's see how we can model a sliding mode TNG. For this model, this is the parameters that we are going to consider. We have two dielectrics. One of them has positive affinity and the other one has negative affinity. And we suppose that a charge density of 7 microcoulombs per meter squared is generated after they are in contact. In fact, it is a standard assumption. In reality, it may not be a constant value and it may degrade over time. But ideally, we can suppose that a charge density is generated and remain on the surface after the contact of the two materials. Remember, like I said, at least one of the materials should be a dielectric or an insulator. We can also have one dielectric and one metal for the contact of the two surface. So metal dielectric is another configuration for the TNG. Okay? So we are going to see if we can get these results as you see when the two surfaces are separated and in fact the layers are very thin so you don't see the two surfaces. But as the distance x is increasing, for example from 1 cm to 5 cm and maximum to 10 cm, we have this potential distribution in the system. Also, we are going to see if we can find the variation of open circuit voltage versus x as you see in this graph and also the charge generated in the short circuit condition. So we are going to find these three results. The potential distribution under open circuit condition, the open circuit voltage as x increases, and the short circuit as x increases. So let's begin and see if we can model that. If you want to find more information about this example, we can find it on this reference. Let's do it. Okay, so we start with the model wizards. And then here we are going to have a 2D model because of the symmetry and the thin film layers that we have in our model. So I click on 2D and then remember for the triboelectric system, we need to use the electrostatics. So we use electrostatics, then add and then continue to the study. For the study, we can use time dependent or stationary. The stationary is simpler and we cannot catch the effect of time for sure. For today, let's use the stationary. But in the case that the motion and the speed of motion is important, you need to use the time dependent study, which is in fact important in some studies. But for now, let's continue with the stationary and done. Now we are in the software. First, we start the parameter and then we define the X, which is the distance of sliding. For now, I want to start X at very small number. I'm not selecting it as zero because I have a reason for that and I will explain why. Let me use a very small number like 0.1 millimeter and then I will tell you why I selected this and X is our parameter. As you see, it says X is a reserve name which means that X has been defined as a coordinate so we cannot use it and I'm gonna use X1 for example which is not a big problem, okay? That's it. Now we go to the geometry. I switch everything to millimeter because I'm dealing with thin layers and then we start making the geometry. First, I want to make the bottom sliding surface. So I right click and then a rectangle. The width I know is 10 centimeter. So it is 100 millimeters. And the height, as you remember, was 220 micron. So it is 0. 22 right and the location I want to select it as minus 100 and the height as 0 which is fine right so I click on build selected and this is the first sliding layer 
the other one I can name it as bottom layer okay now we want to make the top layer so I right click on the bottom and then duplicate and I use the name top they have same size however we have to adjust the distance for the X we are going to use minus 100 plus X1 in fact X1 is the distance of the sliding and as you see when we change X1 the top layer goes to the right hand side right and for Y we just use 0.22 right which means 220 micron above the bottom layer so if I click on build selected and then I zoom in I have the two layers placed on top of each other as you see X1 was a small number so we have a tiny gap between them which is fine we're gonna use that okay we are not done with the geometries we need to define an air domain surrounding these two layers because in the triboelectric systems we need to have an air surrounding the domain and a reference as a ground at the infinity in fact we want to define that as the reference potential how can we make this air and the infinite domain it is something new that we're gonna do now we have to right click we can select a rectangle we need to use a huge geometry to make sure that we are far from these two layers right for the width we can use 400 and for the height I can use 200 right and if I click on build selected I have this over there so I have to adjust the X so I'm gonna use minus 200 and minus 100 right then build selected and as you see it looks like this however we still need to define a layer and an infinite domain so we go back to layers and layer 1 we define the thickness for example 10 millimeters and then for all sides right and then if we click on build selected we get this I'm telling you why I define this after we define that we are good with the geometry and then we go form union and then build up okay before we continue to materials we have to assign these layers at the edge to an infinite domain in fact we want to make this at infinity so I go to definitions and then I go here and then select infinite element domain and now I have domains and then I select the one on the sides so we select them as infinite domains which means it is at infinity right that's it like I said I want to place a reference ground at the edges as our reference for the voltage calculation that's why I'm defining this infinity okay so we are all set with the infinite domain and then we go to materials in the materials I need to define three materials right so I start with air so I go to add materials from library and build in we add air add to component one now I can close this so it is assigned to the whole geometry then I will go and I will deselect the two layers then I use the user defined materials for the top and bottom layers I right click a blank material I select the bottom one so as you see we only need the relative permittivity and from my reference I know that it is 2 then I can change this as bottom and then I can duplicate this one but I will clear and then select top and change top and for the permittivity I use 4 in fact these numbers are from the reference okay so we are all set with the materials now we go to electrostatics and I know that our depth is 0.1 based on the reference the depth through the structure is 10 centimeters now we have to define the boundary conditions properly which is very important for the TNG systems 
First, we need to define the reference, which is our ground. So remember, ground is very important, and if we don't define it properly, we may get errors. So to define the ground, we want to select the infinite domain. The outer boundary of the infinite domain is selected for the ground, which means that at infinity, we have a ground condition, right? That's why we define the infinite domain. So let's select all the boundaries in the outer layer of the infinite domain as the ground, right? Now you can understand the importance of defining the infinite domain, okay? So we are all set with our ground conditions. Now we have to define the surface charge densities. As you remember, we have one positive polarity and one negative polarity. So we define a surface charge density and to select the positive and negative, we have to go to our layers, right? As you remember, we defined X as a very tiny number so that we can simply select this surface or boundary and then assign the surface charge density. Remember, if X was zero, it was a little bit hard to do that. And this is a very simple method of doing this. You may have other techniques to define the boundary condition for the two layers that are getting separated. I use this one because it's pretty simple, right? And it doesn't change the problem significantly. So for the surface charge density, we suppose that the bottom layer has negative triboelectricity or negative tribopolarity. So we have minus seven E minus six, right? We have selected this number based on the reference and it is negative, right? Same thing, but it positive value for the other side. Remember the two sides have similar gaps or similar separations. So we can use same number, but remember the main important point is to ensure that the charge conservation guaranteed in the system, right? So I right click and then surface charge density. Then I select the top layer and for the surface charge density, I use plus 7E minus 6, right? If the gaps were different for the bottom and top layer, you have to calculate in a way that the charge conservation is guaranteed in the system, right? You can imagine what I mean. So imagine that the area under the surface charge density of the top layer and the bottom layers are different. You have to calculate and ensure that the total charge cancel out each other. Also, if it is a metal in contact with the dielectric, for the metals, you cannot use the surface charge density. You have to use the floating potential. But again, you need to ensure that the charge conservation is valid for your system. Okay, we will do one example on the metal and dielectric contact in the future cases. Okay, so we are all set with the boundary condition for the two contact layers. And now we have to define the open circuit condition, which is very important. How can we define that? We just right click on electrostatics and because we don't have electrodes as geometries, we can assign them as boundary conditions. We are going to use floating potential. If you remember from the piezoelectric problems, one simplification is that we assign electrodes as boundary conditions. However, if the thickness is not small, you can define it as a geometry and then define the material and then boundary conditions. But here for simplicity, we just define the electrodes as boundary conditions. And as they are conductive, we can consider them as floating potential assigned to them. Again, it is because we have an open circuit condition. So I select top layer, floating potential. You can also define another floating potential for the bottom layer. As we look into the floating potential condition, we see that the charge is zero which is the case for the open circuit condition. In fact, for the open circuit condition, the charge is zero, right? So we are all set with signing the boundary conditions. Now we can continue to mesh. So we go to mesh and here I'm gonna define extremely fine and build all. Again, the mesh is very quick and then we have to define the study. There is something important in the study as we are going to change the position of the top layer moving from the original position to the right hand side, we are going to sweep the geometry. In fact, sweeping the geometry is a little bit tricky than sweeping other parameters. So for this case, it is better to not use the auxiliary sweep in the stationary or a study extension because it may give you an error and doesn't catch the point. To do this, we have to use a parametric sweep. 
So we right click on study and then add parametric sweep and then plus we already have x1 and now we need to define the range. So as you remember the range was from 0.1 millimeter. So we can say 0.1 and we can change it every 2 millimeters. So 2 200 millimeters because the maximum distance was 10 centimeters and the unit should go to millimeter. I think everything is set with the parameter sweep. We can click on compute and see how the system output is as X1 is increasing and the top layer is sliding over the bottom layer. Let's do that. Okay, the problem is solved. Let's see what we get. The first thing that we want to check in the open circuit condition is the potential distribution and see if we can get the same results as our reference. So this is the final point. If I want to go to the points that we shown in the reference, let's have X as one centimeter. So if I click on plot, I get this one. And as we increase X, we may get more potential distribution. Let's go to five centimeters and then plot and we get this. I hope you can remember this from the reference. Now I want to even increase it further and see if we get the same results to nine centimeters and then we get this. So as you see, the more the top layer goes to the right hand side, the more potential is distributed. This is how a TNG works. In practical case, the sliding layers are getting in contact and then separated, which causes the change of potential right so you can imagine what it means okay so for 90 centimeters of separation we get this results let's look at our slide and see if we get the same results so as you see for 9 centimeters of separation we get these results which is similar to what we got interesting right let's continue on the results and find the open circuit voltage like this figure okay as you see it changes from 0 to 2 kilo volts when x changes from 0 to 9 centimeters and more. Let's do that. Okay, now to find the open circuit voltage on the electrode, we have to define a derived value. So if I right click on that and go to average and then line average. Why average? Because ideally we know that for a conductive layer, the voltage is equal through that. So we need the average, which in fact is equal at all points of the electrode, right? So I click on line average and then I can select one of the electrodes. For example, I can select the top electrode. Okay, so that's it. And what we are gonna find, we just expand and then under electrostatics, electrostatics, electric and electric potential. That's it. One thing before we click on evaluate, we have to change that to parametric solution. If we use this one, it only gives us one number because it is from the stationary. We change to parametric sweep and now we are all set. We have defined that and then we can click on evaluate and wait for calculation of the voltage generated through the variation of X. Okay, it is calculated and if we scroll up, we can see for each X we have a voltage which is actually generated on the top electrode. So let's see if we can plot it. As usual, we can right click and then 1D plot group why 1D? Because it is just a curve, right? And then under 1D plot group, right click, table graph, and we have already defined this table here, right? So we just need to click on plot and see what we get. And there we go. We got these results, right? As you see, we change from 0 to 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters. And then the voltage changes from 0 to 2 kilovolts. Right? This is exactly the same as the result we showed in the slides, which is the results from the reference. So we can successfully model the open circuit voltage generated on the system. Right? It is very interesting. Now, let's do the short circuit condition. To do this, we have to adjust our boundary conditions for the short circuit condition. So we go back to the electrostatics and in here, we have to change the boundary condition as I said. So for the short circuit condition, we know that the voltage is zero, right? As you remember from the slides, or if you have some electrical background, you know that the voltage should be zero. To do this, we just need to disable our floating potential, which is assigned to the electrodes. 
and set the voltage to zero. How we can do that? We can simply define a ground boundary condition because for the ground we know that the voltage is zero and then select the top and bottom electrode. That's everything, right? We are all set with defining the short circuit condition. Now everything is the same. We can go to mesh and we have to build it again. Why we have to build it again? Because as we swapped X, we changed the geometry. So we have to build all and we define mesh again. And now we can go to parametric sweep and press compute to solve. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. The problem is also solved for the short circuit condition. Let's find the short circuit charge or short circuit transfer charge and see if we get the same results as the reference. To do this, again, we have to use the derived values. We right click and in case we have a charge, we need to use the integration and line integration. Why integration? Because we have to find the summation of the charge on the electrode. In fact, we have to accumulate the charge and calculate that for the electrode, right? That's why I'm using the integration. Now I'm going to click on the bottom electrode as one of the electrodes that we have. And then in here, we have to expand it and under electrostatics, current and charge. Now I click on surface charge density and then I add it here. And as you see, it is based on a surface charge density, which is Coulomb per meter. So we have to adjust this formula and we have to multiply the out of plane thickness to this to find the overall charge. I hope you get the point, right? So I know that the out of plane thickness is 0.1 meter or 10 centimeters times the surface charge density. And then if we look at it, we have coulombs, right? And again, we have to change it to parametric solution because we want to have the effect of the change of X on the charge, right? And now we click on evaluate and wait for the calculation. Okay, it is calculated and added under table two. So we have X and the charge. Okay, that's it. Let's plot it and compare with the results of the reference. So we can add the plot in here, but we have to add another table graph to separate the two graphs. And if you put them all in one 1D plot group, it wants to plot it together. So we can disable this. And now right click and then table graph. And here at table two right everything is good we can click on plot and there we go very interesting right same as what we got from the reference we can also change the dimensions to nano coulombs so as you see the charge changes from 0 to around 70 nano coulombs as x changes from 0 to 100 let's compare it with our reference results so as you see we got the same values as X changes from 0 to 10 centimeters, we have the transfer chart changing from 0 to 70 nanocoulombs, right? So we got the same potential distribution for the open circuit condition. We got the same open circuit voltage and we got the same transfer charge under short circuit condition. So I hope you got the idea of modeling the triboelectric nano generators in Comsol for the sliding mode condition. We are going to have another case in the next video. So stay tuned for the next video.